Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. And before we dive into today's Kiki, which is Robin Dixon and Giselle Bryant are finally addressing the colorism and question about them being the biggest bullies in Hollywood. Well, you know, maybe not Hollywood, but the Bravo sphere. So they are clapping back and giving their side of the story. So before we get into the Green Eyed Bandits, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with the community and check out our description box down below. So let's dive right on in. I also know that the question about colorism can be very sensitive on this. So we'll, we'll get into it. We'll talk about it. But let's see what they have to say and then we'll talk about it. So this is according to Reality Blurb. Real Housewives of Potomac Giselle Bryant addresses colorism and bullying accusations as Robin Dixon is challenged on one engagement or maybe the non-engagement. Let's go. Robin Dixon explained why she used that infamous speaker at the cast dinner on Real Housewives of Potomac, and she was challenged on her nearly three-year engagement with Juan Dixon. Meanwhile, Giselle Bryant addressed the accusations of bullying and colorism, and she shared some insight into her dating life. Uh, does she have one? Time will tell. The two stars have been put, um, I'm sorry, the two stars have been a part of the franchise since season one. But their ability to stir up drama has been a source of controversy online, especially regarding the current season. During an interview for the talk show, Sherry, host Sherry Shepard questioned Robin over her decision to bring the speaker on which she played audio of Candace Dillard Bassard shading the cast. Listen, <clears throat> side note, my thoughts on that. I thought that was very whack of Robin. I thought it was tired. I thought it was just really super lame like robin girl boo boo you, i know you're looking for moments i know you're trying to keep you know your flute glass of champagne so you don't get off the show but this isn't it robin this isn't it you gained brownie points when you spoke up about chris and had his back because clearly giselle and ashley were lying and mia was lying through their teeth with the accusations against him but you going after wendy so hard it's too much you going after Candace so hard it's too much Robin girl you're doing the absolute most okay now her friend Giselle who was also in the interview revealed that the speaker was quote planned though Robin explained she already had the speaker in her possession as she carries it everywhere now that I don't believe I think that they had to get the speaker I don't think Robin is just walking around the world with speakers on her. I think that's a lie. I think that, and this is my whole thing. I think that the whole Robin randomly finding audio from Candace's live, I don't believe that. I think a producer showed it to her because they wanted it to be brought to the show. I think Robin was like, yes, I'll be your good soldier and I'll be the person to bring it on the show. All throw Candace under the bus and they went out and got a speaker because they were trying to create a moment. I don't think Robin travels with the speaker. I don't think, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Is she a DJ? I'm confused. No, she's not. I don't even know what Robin does. What's Robin's job? Don't talk about embezzled hats. Come on now. So <laughs> I don't think she was just carrying it around. I think it was a scheme her and the producers did. That's what I think. But let's go. Robin then shared her thought process behind the speaker, claiming she didn't want to pass her phone around to every castmate at the table, which was located in a loud restaurant. Then, number one, chick, don't do it. Number two, chick, you, there's a speaker on the phone. You could just put us, you could just could have clicked speakerphone. And also, you could have done it at the house when you guys were all together. There was no reason to do it at the restaurant, except for the fact you and the producers wanted a moment. Girl, bye. Candace was talking about all of us, she continued. I felt like they, we needed to hear it. Giselle was then asked about bullying and colorism accusations from the fans on social media. She answered that social media does not pay us, so she doesn't pay attention to it. 
The minute it pays us, I'll be all in it, Giselle shared. Until then, it's just foolishness. At one point, the host challenged Robin over her three-year engagement to Juan, the father of her two children. Stop saying the host challenged. I don't see Sherry Shepard challenging anybody on anything. She's not a Wendy Williams. Anyway, let's just, keep, let's just that's for a whole new video. That is for a whole new video. But let's keep going. She shared that they are making progress towards setting a date, which seemed to confuse the host. Who's making progress towards setting a date, she asked. Robin quickly implied that she couldn't discuss it further, as it would spoil future episodes for the viewers. It wouldn't spoil Jack for us. We don't care. We know you and Juan ain't getting married. We know you're waiting to see what happens with this lawsuit that he's implicated in about inappropriate behavior with students at the university that he coaches basketball at. We know you don't trust him with your money because his name is not on the house deed. We know he allegedly is cheating on you with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. We know. We don't care. You're not spoiling Jack for us. Girl, bye. She admitted, however, that she's closer to reaching a prenup. So you're still reaching a prenup. You're still getting closer to a date. Makes zero sense. Robin, stop lying. Stop lying. Concerning Giselle's dating life, she shared that she's dating younger men because they don't want to have a whole lot of conversation and they don't want to bother you. No, Giselle, that's the men you are allegedly dating. <laughs> men of any age like to have conversation with women that they're into he's just not into you boo boo he's just not into you men like to have conversation with women that they're into regardless of their age are you going to sit around and have a therapy session let's talk about our feelings probably not but are you going to have conversation yeah because that's a healthy relationship or are you just doing drive-bys girl bye Girl, bye. When asked about her ideal man, Giselle shared, I just want to have fun adding no drama. Basically, no man is trying to commit to you. We get it, Giselle. We get it. It's all good. Go back to Jamal, who lives in your phone. Now, let's get back to the issue of colorism and bullying. Now, you guys know that I personally don't see colorism on Potomac. I don't see it. I don't think it has. I don't think the drama. I, I see hypocrisy. I see sides. I don't think any are because some people have lighter skin and some people have darker skin. And to me, that is what needed for it to be colorism. But they bully. They are hypocritical. They have alliances with people who are dark, light, all of it. They go against Karen. Karen's very light. They punk Mia all the time. Mia's lighter than they are. You know, they're friends with um, Sharice. Sharice's not light skin. She's like brown skin. You know, they went after uh, Katie. Remember Katie in the couple, first couple of seasons? They were like, why do you call yourself biracial? You're acting like it's something wrong with being black. You know, they weren't being like, no, Katie, you're not dark enough or you're not, you know, you're too dark to be right? biracial. It was the opposite. I just don't get the colorism aspect. Just because one person is light skinned and they don't like someone who's dark skinned doesn't make it colorism. That's just not true. And they've gone after, they used to punk Ashley. They used, they, they used to play Ashley and they still do. They went after her with all the Michael Darby stuff. They said she didn't belong in the group in Potomac when she first came on the scene because she was young and she was free and she was doing this, that, and the third, talking about threesomes or whatever. And Ashley's biracial or like mixed, you know what I, you know what I mean? Like really light skinned. So I don't think it's about colorism at all. Do I think they're bullies? Yes. Do I think they're liars? Yes. Do I see the hypocrisy? Yes. Do I see the favoritism? Yes. Do I see the conniving and the manipulation? Yes. But I think it's more of they're just miserable, bitter women who don't have anything going on in their own lives. So they deflect. They want to bring people down. Oh, you have a marriage? Let's let's bring down your marriage. You know, oh, you are a businesswoman? Let's bring, let's, you know, clown about your business, you know, whatever it is. To me, it's more that they're miserable and they're bitter and they're unhappy with themselves. So they lash out 
Like, let's go after Eddie. Let's go after Chris. Let's go after, you know, Karen and Ray. Let's go after Monique and Chris Samuels. Like, to me, it's more of just their own bitterness and misery and their mean girls. But I don't think it's rooted in anybody's skin color. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that Robin and Juan are any closer to a prenup, any closer to setting a date for their wedding? Do you think it's real or do you think everybody knows this is a fake relationship? It's a fake storyline. They're glorified roommates at this point. Juan looks miserable and he probably needs to focus on the upcoming lawsuit and stop trying to lie in our faces that he's in a relationship with Robin. What do you think about Giselle saying that she wants to date younger men because they don't care about conversation and she wants to have fun with no drama? To me, and I'm not slut shaming or anything like that because I think you do what you want to do with your body. You're an adult. You're a consenting person. If you want to have fun, have fun. Do you? Whatever. It's your life. It's your body. Be happy and be safe. But with Giselle, I don't like the fact that she's like, young guys, I want to have conversation. It's like, no, that's actually not true. Maybe you just are struggling with the men you're dating or the men that you're finding in the non-relationships you're having. Like, I don't like it when people say there's no good men out there. There's a lot of great men out there, just maybe not the ones you're dating or, you know, all women are gold diggers. No, maybe women just have standards. Do you know what I mean? So that's really more what I'm coming from with the whole Giselle situation. You know, if she was just wants to have, just say, I want to have fun right now. No strings attached. It doesn't have to be putting down men of a certain age because they don't want to have conversation. It's just like, no, boo-boo. They just don't want to talk to you, Jizzy. Put it down below. And then where do you fall on the colorism and bullying situation? You know, do you see colorism or do you not? I don't see it. So let me know what you think. And then also, what do you think about the bullying? Do you think the bullying is real and the hypocrisy on the show? And to be honest, the bullying and the hypocrisy and the very, very contrived storylines that are so clearly just made up to hurt people, it's making me not like Potomac anymore. And I love Potomac. I really love Potomac. I love the show. I was excited for the new season. But to me, it's going to the way of a Beverly Hills or New York City or a Dallas where it's just like you're going too dark. The work is showing. And it's to the point where it's no longer fun to watch. But let me know what you guys think. Put it down below. But before you do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with the community. And check out our description box down below. With that, you guys, I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care, where your host, writer, actor, and producer, Candy Washington, helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go.